All right. <laughs> back in the back in the cockpit locker again. Oh, it's so cold out here. It's um it's about minus 10 degrees today, and uh, I'm braving the elements out in the cockpit locker to fix a problem that we've been having for uh, a few years now, actually. Ever since we installed our lithium batteries back in Florida, we installed this um, 1.2 kilowatt battery charger. It's one of the only ones we could afford at the time that would bring in 230 volts from shore power and convert it into 48 volt DC that could charge our battery bank. But ever since we've installed it, it's actually been giving us a little bit of an issue because of the way the battery charger works. It's designed more for old lead acid batteries than new lithium batteries. Not to get into too much detail, but we've had a hard time with it um, fully charging our batteries. And so it will charge them up to the point where it thinks they're fully charged and then it will sort of mark them as 100% even though it was more like 85, maybe 88% charged. And then the next time it would charge up, it would think it was 100%, but it'd be less and less and less. Over the course of a few months, it would slowly bring our 100% our battery charge down and down and down. And it wasn't much of an issue at the beginning because our solar panel, this charger over here, which you can't really see, this little blue blinking light over here, that's our solar charge controller. Um, when we had sunshine, it would actually bring our batteries up to 100%. So it wasn't really an issue until we started sailing further north and into Norway. Um, and this winter, it's actually become quite a bit of an issue because we never really know how fully charged our batteries are. And with zero solar, they're never actually getting up to 100%. So today I'm back in the cockpit locker and our friends over at Battleborn Batteries who supplied us with our lithium batteries. So they've sent over a new charge controller slash inverter that I'll be installing today. And it's gonna fix quite a few of the problems we've been having with the charging and fully charging the batteries. And the fact that it's newer and it's more integrated into the rest of our Victron network, um, we'll be able to monitor it and change the settings from the Bluetooth app. It's also a lot larger of a battery charger. It's five kilowatts and this was only 1.2. So when we plug into the dock, we'll be able to charge up a lot faster. And it has an inverter built into it. So we'll be able to run 230 volt appliances off of it as well. So it solved a whole bunch of problems that we've been having and I'm pretty excited to get installed today. But first I have to remove this one and uh, then the new one's a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna have to modify this space a little bit in order to install it, but I need a heater in here, man. It's really cold. <laughs> All right, I've got a little uh, video light. So I can see what I'm doing. This is Victron's old Titan 48 volt charger. Uh, and the new one that we're installing is a Multi Plus 2, I think. It's a much newer system and it's much more integrated. Um, and overall, it's gonna be much better and solve a lot of the issues we've been having. But one of the problems we're gonna face is that it's also quite a bit larger than this little one. So I'm gonna take this one off, unwire it. Um, the new one should fit in here, but I might have to build out this space a little bit more, clean up some of these wires a little bit. It's gonna be worth it in the end. All right. Make sure the breaker's off. I'm closing the lid. It's cold outside. Oh yeah. I opened up our refrigerator compartment and uh, shoved the heater down underneath there where our electric motor is. So I'm getting a little bit of heat coming up in here too. <laughs> it's cold outside, man. I don't know why I decided to do this in Norway. Well, the breakers are off. Oh no. My voltmeter's dead. I'm not sure if I've ever had to replace a battery for this voltmeter in like the 20 years I've owned it. It's probably nine volts, right? Yep. Hey, back in business. All right, I believe we still have voltage from the battery. Yeah, 52 there. Nothing coming in on AC. Oh, we need to turn that off. Turn that off. out of the way now. The new one is this wide. Oh, my light died. Okay. 
get my heat back. Hey Kika. Yeah? Do you see that uh, black like plate maybe on the freezer or something? Maybe, the... maybe it's over by the stove. Yeah, let me check. It's like it's hard to see because everything's dark. Yeah, 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 I see it. Can you pass that out to me? Yeah. That's it. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Is it cold out in there? I have the heater running underneath the fridge, so it's not too bad. If I can see my breath. <laughs> All right. This thing's gonna be a bear to install. It's heavy. But it should actually fit. It's not too much wider than the other one, so. Well, going to install the mounting plate and then hang it. Yeah, right like, And screw it down. Go with step one and step <laughs> <laughs> you need to come off. There we go. All right. <laughs> That's huge. That's the big coil that converts all the electricity. Five kilowatts of 230 volt down to. 48 volt DC. It's no Wait, joke. Did you try? What the fuck? Why is that broken already? Mm -hmm. Huh. Stupid. This little piece of plastic. It's meant to hold uh, the cooling fan on. Oh, the thing's broken. It did get shipped all the way over from the United States, so somewhat of that is to be expected, but I'm going to have to figure out how to fix that before. Too long. A little bit of super glue, maybe. All right. Man, how am I gonna lift this thing into place? So much more simple, so much more clean than the other one. There's probably a smarter way to do this. Just can't really think of it right now. Okay, so Dan is out in the cockpit working on the new inverter right now, which means I'm inside literally working by candlelight. <laughs> Luckily, we have the wood stove on right now, so it's keeping us warm and toasty inside. And I have about 18% of my computer left to work afterwards. I probably will just call it a night. Hopefully by that time, then we'll be done with the inverter and we can have power back on. Hello. Come in. <laughs> Hi in there. Ooh, you're letting all my warm air out. How's it going? Pretty good. Um, I knew this new inverter was going to be bigger, and it definitely is. So I've got a lot of uh, wires to reroute now. Um, but I uh, should be able to turn the power back on in like 30 minutes, maybe 40 minutes. Good. So you don't have to live in the dark anymore. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's not so bad when I close the lid though. The warm air from inside is kind of like blowing up in here and keeping me nice and toasty. Nice. This thing's a beast. Look at all this copper. It's like 30 pounds of copper. I also have to make the actual battery cables, the ones that connect the charger to the battery bigger as well because it's um, almost three times more power coming through them. So I've got to rerun all new cabling. Um, it's not bad. Soon I'm going to have to climb out, put everything back in this side, take everything out of that side <laughs> and make the final connections. But. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. I'm excited to get this thing installed. It looks like a mess right now. Oh, of course it does. <laughs> it always does. And they put the cover on and clean up all the wires and it's like, poof, pretty again. Eventually I'm going to have to rerun all of these. But for right now, I'm just like sort of extending the wiring from the old inverter slash charger because it was a little bit too short. Cool. All right. Well, bye. Bye. <laughs> Okay, everything uh, should be good to go now, and I'm just waiting for him to let me know, and we'll turn on the main battery switch. Yeah, I'm ready if you are. Yeah? Yep. Alrighty, let's do this. Oopsie. All right, you ready? Yeah. All right. I've yeah. Voltage. Power. We've got light. <laughs>
So with our last battery charger, we wired a little switch into this panel so that we could turn it on and off without climbing into the cockpit locker. But this new one uh, is a little bit different. The old one needed an open circuit to turn it on, and then when you closed it, it turned it off. And this one's the opposite. It needs a closed circuit to turn it on and an open one to turn it off. So our little switch in here, I need to uh, rewire. Because right now the switch is on, which means the charger is off. So I need to rewire it so that when the switch is on, the charger is on, and when the switch is off, the charger is also off. Because <laughs> that just makes sense. Because right now it's red and the charger's off. Very confusing. We also had these switch plates made up in the UK last year while we were in there. Um, there's a guy named Christoph who runs a small company called Millbase. And if you send him your sketch, he'll make these little switch plates for you in like any shape, size, color that you want. Uh, he does really, really good work. So if you guys want some plates like this made for your boat, we'll leave a link to his website in the description of this video. Now that the new inverter's installed, uh, I've made a little wood plate that's gonna get mounted back here in the nav desk. And it's gonna have a 120 volt outlet and it's gonna have a 230 volt outlet and it's gonna have a bunch of little 12 volt USB plugs so that when we're charging everything, we have all the voltages in one place. Um, just a piece of random wood spray painted, but I've already run all the wires from both inverters and our 12 volt fuse. And now I just have to install all these little plugs. Since the new inverter slash battery charger is installed, uh, we now have a 230 volt inverter on board, which means we need to wire some 230 volt breakers for things like the outlets and the new hot water heater. Do we have the hot water heater installed yet? <laughs> Spoiler alert, <laughs> we installed a 230 volt hot water heater. We have some 120 volt breakers for our current inverter over there but we're going to be pulling those as well and wiring everything into this panel back here i just finished putting together this breaker box and all of the ac stuff is going to be on gfcis so if there's ever a short or anything gets wet they're going to immediately trip and then all the black ones are actually the same breakers, but a special kind that you could run uh, 230 volt AC, 120 AC, or 48, up to 48 volt DC through as well. So I'm gonna rewire all of our 48 volt breakers into this panel as well. And so everything's gonna be in one place. It's gonna be clean, simple, and easy to operate. But first, I need to pull out all of our old system behind me and start rewiring everything. all done. I just finished installing some 220 and 120 volt outlets here in the galley as well and we picked up a few new uh, electrical appliances for the galley including a convection microwave and an induction cook plate because after we made that video about Solona we got a ton of questions about is induction worth it? Can you run induction on an electric boat? And we don't know. So we picked up a small plate and over the next couple of months we'll be cooking with it and testing it and seeing how it works and how much power we actually end up using. And um, yeah, stay tuned for that. We're excited to experiment a bit with it and see how it all works. We also ended up switching our outlets over in the nav desk that 
we just installed to the European style outlets. We had the UK ones because we still had them from when we were in the UK last year, but uh, this might start <laughs> riots in the comments section, but we kind of like the European style more. And since we're gonna be sailing through Europe for a while, it just makes more sense to have that style outlet on our boat. It's more common, it's more available, it's easier to adapt. And one of our patrons here in Trondheim is an electrician, so he's been driving us around Trondheim, helping us find all the little bits and pieces we needed to make this whole project happen. So thanks a lot, Thomas. You're a huge help getting all this done. So now we have 12 volt DC, 48 volt DC, 120 AC and 230 AC all on board. The 12 volt is mostly for all of our typical marine navigation gear and nav lights, autopilot, the sort of stuff a boat needs to run. 48 volt, that's what our battery bank is wired at to run our larger 48 volt loads like the electric motor, the windlass and the inverter. We kept our 120 AC inverter so that we can still run some of our North American appliances if we have them on board or if we ever sail back to North America, it'll be easy to use appliances there and the new battery charger is also an inverter. So we have 230 volts AC on board so we can run appliances from the rest of the world as well. Now, our battery charger, as in our shore power coming in from the dock is 230 volts. And that works really well for us because it works everywhere in the world that has 230 on the dock. And it also works in North America where 120 is the standard for smaller boats like ours, but all the big boats use 230 anyway. So you just build a little adapter and you can plug in and get 230 in North America as well. And it makes a huge difference because our shore cord is tiny. It's like a regular extension cord. So it's so much lighter and it's so much easier to manage. Uh, it just makes sense to us. If you're interested about learning the basics of electrical systems or even diving into some more advanced circuitry, check out some of the classes on Skillshare. It's a platform dedicated to learning and sharing new skills. A few of the classes in there have been really helpful to me clarifying some of the more complex electrical theories that have confused me in the past. Like this series from Leon about the fundamentals of electricity and another great one by Graham about the fundamentals of DC circuitry specifically. So if you're like me and enjoy learning something new, click the link in the video description below and the first thousand of you will get a free trial to Skillshare Premium Membership. There's new classes uploaded all the time, so if you wanna keep learning after that, it's less than $10 a month. But today's learning and boat work is finished because today is a special day. Today is Kika's birthday. How'd I do birthday, girl? <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, it sounded good to me. Um, excuse, um, excuse me? me? Did Din just steal our Skillshare bit? It was never our Skillshare bit. What? Fine, then maybe he should be the one doing it from now on. Nah. But birthday, oh, birthday yeah. girl. Let's go wanna, out. It's go my outside. birthday! All right. I don't think it's gonna go through. <laughs> Sounds so cool. <laughs> it's a little different than the uh, the normal sunsets we watch on your birthday. It's a frozen birthday sunset. <sighs> Happy birthday. <laughs> That's awesome. So today is Kika's birthday, so we're making pizza. Um, we don't have an oven on board though, so we're turning our little two burner alcohol stove into an oven with some tin foil and uh, cast iron skillet that we've been carrying around for five years, probably. Um, also just finished cooking her grandma's uh, pineapple upside down cake, which is Kika's favorite cake, and cooked that in the rice maker. So uh, it's a very <laughs> DIY sort of dinner, but it should be pretty good. We, uh, we cheat a little bit with pizza and we don't make our own pizza crust. Um, today we're using naan, some garlic naan for like curry which makes really good pizza crust. It's the perfect size for like one person. So we're making two of them. We've got of like course. white sauce pizza. We can put some smoked salmon and avocado and spinach on it. And then we've got a red sauce pizza that's gonna be like the carnivore pizza with bacon and pepperoni and mushrooms. That's gonna be really good. 
It's not delivery. It's it's Dan Giorno. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> Difference between an alcohol stove, a stove, and an oven. It's an oven is covered, so a little magic trick to turn any stove into an oven. Put some tin foil there. Boom! You excited for pizza? Ah, oh, yes. Birthday girl. I'm excited for pizza. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> do you want to? Is that? Do you want to show the people what you got for birthday? That's Ben's birthday present to me. And uh, could you do me a favor? Redeemable. Yes card. Mm -hmm. Which means I can ask him ten, ten favors and he is... Pre-authorized punch card. Yes. So he has to say yes. He can't say no. It's like no questions asked favor cards. <laughs> I'm terrified. <laughs> this is awesome. I'm glad you I was... like it. <laughs> don't, I was excited. Don't abuse the power. <laughs> Come on. I have a really big heart. <laughs> Yeah. I won't abuse the power of awesome favors you're gonna have to say yes to. <laughs> I'm gonna keep but the thing is, so when Din gave it to me, he was like, But you can't ask for a favor unless you ask unless I have the card in my hand. You do have to present the card to be val of course. You can't just walk in and no. just like act like you have one. You have to show so, proof. So I'm gonna always keep it with me and if I'm gonna ask Din for a favor, but if I remember it I'll be like oh. mm -hmm. That's the rule. I only have ten though, so I'll have to like uh, to make it count. I have to come up with 10 ways to say yes. Oh, yeah, is that what it is? You have to say yes in different no, ways every each time? Way, each oh, one is one that time. it? Yes, sure, yup, of course, yeah. No problem for you, anything, ah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, yeah. Duh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. This is awesome. This is the best present. I'm glad you yeah. like it. Oh, yeah. But better than this one no this was this was really good too that was my last year's present two years, oh, no, two two years, years ago's ago. present oh whoa yeah. I'm gonna go 50 50 I can't decide which one do you I want I want this half with with the one little baby <laughs> avocado one yeah <laughs> happy birthday <laughs> to you Happy birthday. Careful, don't break it to it's you. It's gonna like sink in the middle. Happy birthday, dear Kika. Oh, this cake is crooked and the candle's falling. Happy birthday to you. Okay, I guess make 31 wishes. It's gonna take a while, so you better be strong in your head. Alright, right, 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 right. we just want one wish. Quick before wish. the wax melts onto the cake. Oh, that was easy. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Piney. <laughs> It smells like Kendall now. You want a slice of this thing then? <laughs> yes, please. Stop! No, no, no! Wrong way! As they say in the other game. Oh, he's got laughs. Come on, 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 come on! Yeah! Yeah! We win as a team, right? <laughs> I was like, everyone laughed at me. I had, I had a whole lap to go. <laughs> it's just a little this big. It's not really a team game. It is. Because if you win, I win. Inside. And jump. Yeah! Oh. Good job. Dude, my heart's racing. <laughs> I've never been rolled over by a giant snowball before. And the game is also probably Oh. Rock turn <laughs> eight! We have You time. said they went by quickly! <laughs> We have to do this six, <laughs> seven more times. <gasps> and bye, Donkey Kong. Oh, I have to lose? Winner! Yeah! Da, da, and it's... I went on my birthday. Good job. It's not a part. It's not a birthday party without Mario Party. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Dan. That's me. Got eight stars, eight hundred and sixty-five coins. You ever had that many coins before? Ever? <laughs> Technically, I was supposed to have more, but you can't go over nine hundred and ninety-nine. So you would have had like two thousand or something at one point. I would have had like a lot more, yeah, because yeah, I I won that chins thing 
times like 10. <laughs> yeah.